using the same example, we're going to go ahead and approximate the region by using a right rectangular approximation method. Okay. As you can see right here, the R stands for right. So let me go ahead and get the same graph drawn here and we'll work off of that. Now that we have the graph, let's go ahead and uh, figure out how wide each of the intervals are. And as we can guess, we're going to see that we're going to have the same width of every rectangle again in this case if we're going to inscribe six rectangles in this horizontal space. So the value of the integral can be approximated by a right ram. And I've run out of space here, so but if you wrote this a little bit lower, you would be able to put it underneath, underneath right here and have enough room to go across. All right, so let's go ahead and inscribe six rectangles using our right ram. Beginning with our a value at negative one, I'm going to go ahead and draw the base of my first rectangle. I'm going to cover a distance of one, but instead of going from the left side of the marked interval, I'm going to go from the right. So from the right side of my partition up until I meet the curve, I'll stop here. Now I have the bottom and the right side of my rectangle, so because I'm doing a right ram, I'm going to have to travel across this way until I line up vertically with negative one and complete my rectangle. So let's find the area in this rectangle, which we can clearly see is an under approximation because we're leaving out some of the area right here. So the width is 1 and the functional value at, now notice that we're going to start with 0 as opposed to the negative 1 in the previous example. Okay. So once we find out what the functional value is, which I believe that's 13, we would know the height of the rectangle. So the height of the rectangle is determined by the functional value on the side, the appropriate side of the base of the rectangle. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the picture of the next right rectangle. So here's our next base right here. We stop at one and at one meet the curve. Okay, we've got two sides out of four. Now travel to the left. We have four sides now. So let's find the area here. So the representation there is one times the functional value at one. There's the base of our third rectangle. The right side, because we're doing a right ram, determines the height. Meet the curve. Travel backwards. Okay, let's find an expression that represents the area in that rectangle. So it's plus. The base is 1. The height is determined by the functional value at 2. And as we can see in these three rectangles, if we were to sum them, we have um, less than the total area that covers the graph from negative 1 to 2. And that's because we have a decreasing curve with a right rectangle. Next partition, right ram, right side, meet the curve, travel over. Let's find, let's find an expression. fifth rectangle, right side, you can see that this is going to be an over approximation of the actual, actual area. One more rectangle, and as you can kind of see the pattern here, we're going to have the last functional value as the height of our last rectangle. So some of this excess area will make up for some of this uh, under area, if you will.
Okay, then it's simply performing the computations. So here we're going to have 1 times 13 plus 1 times the functional value at 1 when I insert 1 in here should be 8. The functional value at 2 when 2 is replaced into the function is 5 plus I guess we're on the fourth rectangle, so that width is 1, that height is 4, that's the functional value, plus the area in this rectangle is 1 wide and the height is 5, and the last area is 1 wide and 8 high. And if we're trying to think about the comparison of this value, this approximate to the last example we did, it's likely going to be a little bit less because we have more rectangles that fall below the curve. Adding these values, let's see, that's 21, 26, 30, 35, 43. This is probably an under approximate of the actual area, whereas my last one was an over estimation. Kind of coming back here to these two rectangles right here, you can see that the area in the rectangles is an over approximate. And if you were asked to explain why it's an over approximate of the actual area from 3 to 4 or 4 to 5, uh, you would say something like, well, it's an increasing curve on this interval with a right rectangle. So that has your rectangle come above the curve and give you more area in your approximate than is actually occurring underneath the curve to the x-axis to y equals zero. So those are some good things to look at. Something else to kind of note is this. When you look at the setup of the uh, expression that represents the approximate area under the curve, because we're doing a right ram, a right ram, um, notice that the first functional value at negative one is not included. That would be what we had in the previous example when we did a left ram. Uh, but here in this problem right here, because we're doing a right ram, the first functional value that we're going to use would be f evaluated at 0. Okay. And then we're going to go all the way to the end of the interval, and the last functional value that I'm going to use occurs at b, uh, b being 5 here, the functional value at 5. And if you really quickly compare it to the previous example up here, notice just noticing some of the things that we see in the setup here. Okay, because we were doing a left ram back up here, we're going to use the first functional value at negative 1, but we wouldn't use the last functional value at 5 because what we used to determine the height was the functional value at 4. So you can kind of see in the presence of this setup that this would be a left ram because you're starting at uh, the left endpoint of the bounded region that you want to approximate the area of. Okay? And it doesn't include the last functional value. Whereas in this second example with right ram, we would not use f of negative 1, okay? and we didn't here. We started at 0, but we would use f evaluated at 5. And that's just the nature of a, a left ram and a right ram and, and the patterns that it contributes to the setup of the approximate area. So for our last example, what we're going to do is one more ram, and that's the midpoint ram. An AP student is ex expected to be able to approximate area and regions using three types of ram left ram, right ram, and midpoint ram. And as you noticed in the title of the notes, we also call this Riemann sums. Um, a person in our past that's responsible for this idea is George Riemann. And so a lot of times when we talk about a ram, we also are talking about a Riemann sum, uh, just to give credit where credit is due. So sometimes you'll see me uh, see something written down as find a ram. Um, more often than not on an AP test, uh, you'll see use a Riemann sum and that, uh, of course, means the same thing that we're doing here. Okay, so we've seen left ram, right ram. Now it's time to look at a midpoint ram. And I'm going to use the same example, too. Uh, I could have used different ones, but uh, it's just as easy to draw this one. So in our uh, last example, we're going to approximate the area in the region using a midpoint ram. All right, so approximating the same integral from the same a and b values using a midpoint ram. I'm going to go ahead and construct the graph here. Um, we can see that based on our last two examples also that because we're inscribing six rectangles in the uh, region bounded from negative 1 to 5, the width is still going to be 1. The midpoint ram is a little bit more involved, so we'll see how that kind of works out here. All 
All right, again, we know the partitions are one wide, so I am going to start at negative one, and I'm going to conclude the base of the first rectangle at zero. We got that. So I'm going to kind of sketch that in there. Now what I want to do is I want to go from not left, not right, but the midpoint, the middle of this segment to the curve. So notice that between negative one and zero, we would be at negative one half. So I'm going to just kind of draw this real light dashed line up to the curve, and I'm going to fall about right here on the graph. That's where the, the, um, the functional value is at negative one half. All right, so how do we draw a rectangle from here? Well, off of this point that's on the graph, we're gonna go a little to the left and the same to the right, and we're gonna put a top on our rectangle. So it's in the middle of the interval that I go up and meet the curve. Notice I don't have a functional value yet. I can find one because I have an equation though. All right, I've got a bottom and a top, so what I have to do now is construct, construct the rectangle. Oh, goodness. Okay, and as you can see from this illustration, or not, uh, I have a little bit of the rectangle that falls below the curve and a little bit that falls above the curve. So actually, it's probably going to be a better estimate of the area under the curve from negative 1 to 0. So let's come down here and see what it looks like as far as an expression that represents the area in this region. Okay, well, the base is still 1. The height now is the functional value, not at negative one, not at zero, but the halfway point, the functional value at negative one half. So we're gonna have to go back to get this y value and plug negative one half in here uh, to get the height of this rectangle. Okay, let's move on to our second rectangle. Okay, starting at zero, concluding at one, here's the base of our second rectangle. We're not going to use the zero, we're not going to use the one as our input. We're going to use positive one half, go up to the curve, meet it. It falls about right here. To construct the rectangle, we're going to go a little off to the left, a little bit, the same amount off to the right, till we line up with each of the endpoints down here, and then we're going to draw in our rectangle. And again, like the previous rectangle, you can see that we have part of the graph that falls above the rectangle and part of the graph that falls below the rectangle. So that'll kind of offset each other and be a better approximate of the actual area from the curve to the x-axis from zero to one. So let's ca calculate an exp or find an expression that represents the area in that rectangle. Well, the base is still one. The height is now represented by the functional value at one half. Again, I'll be able to go back and find that y value, the height of that rectangle, by evaluating this function right here at one half. Continuing, finding midpoint ram. All right, not using one, not using two, but using three halves. Let's go up and meet the curve about right here. To the left, travel to the left, travel to the right, the same amount. Conclude drawing the rectangle. Let's find an expression that represents that area. Two to three at five halves, we'll go up and meet the curve, travel a little to the left, a little to the right, same amount. Let's find an expression for that area. That should be a seven halves right there. Midpoint ram, middle of the section. Let's find an expression for that area. I'm going to have to wrap it down here. Plus one times the functional value at, this would be four and a half or nine halves. It, it would certainly be fine for you to put in functional value at 4.5, but I'm just going to work with the improper fractions. Okay, now all that's left to do is, is calculate, find the, uh, the values, and multiply by one. 
So 1 times the functional value at negative 1 half. I'm going to go ahead and switch over here to decimals. Uh, this functional value, when you plug negative 1 half in here, you get 16.25. And it's not necessary for me to show the 1 times. I'm just going to go ahead and have it down here. But for you, if you're working on it, because it's 1, it's not necessary. Uh, if it was any other number besides 1, of course, you'd want to make sure and show it. Or better yet, you could factor out a 2 or 3 or 4 or whatever the actual width was. You could factor out all of the expressions if you want to to make, make the work a little easier. Okay, plus. Right, so we end up with uh, 1 times 6.25, 1 times 10.25, 1 times 6.25, 1 times 4.25, 1 times 4.25, and 1 times 6.25. And so let's sum all those values. And we end up with 47.5. So of all three estimates, it's, it's, like, it's, it's likely that this value right here would be a, a closer approximation to the actual um, area between the curve and the x-axis. So this is a way to approximate area under regions if we don't have a geometric shape that we're familiar with or know or see that we could use a geometric formula for. So at best right now, all we can do is approximate. In the coming days, we're going to actually be able to find the true value of that region, um, and we'll look at how to incorporate our indefinite integral to help us do that at that time. But So this was just, like I said, a rectangular area approximation method, a way to use rectangles and known geometric formulas to help us approximate the area in regions. A student is responsible for the left ram, right ram, and midpoint ram. And we're going to have future examples to help us um, work through this and understand it a little bit better too if need be.